Uh, I'm in Brighton after a day at City Camp where we've had some terrific discussions about uh, digital inclusion, and I'm uh, here wrapping up with three of the participants. Hello, my name is Louise. I'm interested in digital engagement. Um, I'm with all the two people here. And my name is Helen Goss, and I'm interested in digital inclusion, uh, and I'm very interested in creative educational techniques in order to hook people in. And my name is Richard Varman. I run a company called Locomatrix. Bit of a veteran now of City Camp. I uh, think I've been to all the, uh, the ones in Brighton. And um, I led a group on talking about um, social networks and uh, for the elderly, something that I've actually done a bit of work on already, and I sort of introduced it um, to very lively discussion. And um, Richard, as uh, we were talking about, I'm doing an exploration for Nominate Trust on what are the priorities for investment in technology to help uh, older people uh, improve their lives? What came out of the discussion that's useful on that, do you think? I think several things. I mean, I, I, probably that the technology itself is not the most important thing. I think it's quite often the case that uh, um, there's a huge opportunity with technology now that um, uh, computers have moved away from rather frightening things towards mobile phones and tablets, which are far more friendly and people are already used to. Mo um, tablets particularly looking a little bit like television, so uh, already a sort of fairly familiar concept. But um, I think the um, more important things were the, about the actual nature of social networks. I think it's a sort of hugely interesting thing that younger people, um, we're deluged with information, whether it's from Twitter, whether it's from uh, Facebook and things like that, almost got too much information, whereas elderly and um, digitally excluded people are very much isolated and uh, there have got to be ways that, that um, the technologies that we use can be um, used to improve their lives. I had a, an interesting discussion in a separate group actually where we were talking about how some service providers are a little bit um, concerned about the, the fact that a lot of older people don't use the internet and they don't feel that their service is therefore um, it's, it's, it's um, a good idea to go on to the internet to, to actually advertise what they do. Um, and um, my opinion about that is that uh, they probably have uh, some member in their family that would engage in some way that may find that information. Uh, therefore, it's, m it's relevant to put that um, information about their service on there because uh, their family member might actually find that and then pass it on um, on a one-to-one -one basis, which face-to-face uh, -face is so much more, um, I think, the way that they like to be communicated with, they being the elderly. <laughs> From my experience on the group that was uh, uh, taking part, we spoke about um, digital engagement for older people. And one of the things that came very clear is that uh, whatever technology we use, um, we benefit communities and older people especially. But what we need to do is to make sure is that older people, especially older people, to take the pleasure of using technology. Uh, and this is a digital engagement for us rather than imposing to them how to use and, you know, how to do the syllabus, how to set up emails. Uh, they need to, we need to help and work with them to find out the best way to suit them, their needs, and take the pleasure of using the internet. And Richard, we talked about um, how to do projects at relatively low cost in ways which are easily replicable. Are there some lessons for funders there? Well, ab absolutely, yes. I mean, the... Um, uh, about the same time last year, and this came out of a city camp idea as well, we set up a group called Digital Education Brighton. And it was very much the idea that this wasn't going to be a talking shop. It was about doing projects. And it, uh, the only point of having meetings is, at, um, is only to talk about how the projects are going and getting more help in doing these things. And I think just within the year that it's been going, we've got over 100 members and we've done about I think a dozen projects now, not always successfully, but they're low cost, they come from people that have actually got the needs, and they can be solved quite often, very, very simply. And they engage lots of different people, whether it's universities, whether it's schools, um, whether it's companies that can get involved. And it's very much what we've been talking about today, is whether we could use this sort of idea, a project-based group, whether it's simply 
providing Skype so that people can in a care home could talk to other people in care homes or whether maybe some, uh, some more complicated projects, but very much practical stuff, getting things done. Any further thoughts from your work uh, with yeah. Skip over the years on well, how to make the most of funding, build network, get innovation? Well, um, I, as I say, I'm really interested in the creative uh, hook part of it, uh, and I think that trying to engage people is key. Um, you don't um, have a successful service unless it's something that people want to use. Um, and um, doing the digital natives after school club that we're um, piloting at the moment, we're in our second term, we're looking to... Um, make a model so that other people can benefit from how young people engage with technology in such an enthusiastic way. There's ways that uh, will then surely work to try to um, engage older people or people who didn't realize that they like technology. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and we're hoping to roll that out in some, some way.